herzlich willkommen zum 36. DocFest München. A very warm welcome to the 36th International Doc Festival Munich. Um, this year as our online edition DocFest at Home 2021. Um, right here from the Silbersaal in the Deutsches Museum, one of our usual locations. My name is Daniel Lang and I'm going to be your host for this Q&A. Um, the film we're going to talk about is called School of Hope by the director Mohamed El Aboudi. Um, it's a German premiere um, and it, it's running in the Doc Horizonte competition. Um, and I'm very, very happy to welcome Mohamed El Aboudi with us. Hello. Hello and thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Um, Mohamed, your film is about a small, very small one or two room school in the middle of nowhere in Morocco. Um, how did you find this school and how did you find this teacher and the community surrounding it? Well, honestly, actually, I, um, uh, in the beginning, I, it wasn't actually the, uh, the idea of, uh, of uh, making a film about this community or this uh, small school which you call it in the middle of nowhere, which, which, which is it is, in the middle of nowhere. Um, my, uh, my idea in the beginning was too simple. I want to make a film about the um, education system in Morocco, because um, my, uh, in one of my previous films called Dance Outlaws, uh, I discovered that there are a lot of people in Morocco which they are really, they can't even pronounce their names, they can pronounce even um, their ID card. To say an ID card in Arabic, they couldn't say it. And then I, I was just like, what is that? Mm -hmm. Then I find out that most of the people, they, are, they have never been in school. And then I contacted the family, that's a young girl. She, they have never been in school. And then when I start to talk and they find out people, they are living like, just living, they, you know, they. They have no worries about life. What they, what is their duty? What is their responsibility? What is the responsibility of the, the, the government? What is the response? Absolutely, um, they live for, you know, day by day, by day nothing else. And um, and then and then I was starting to think that how far we can go. I mean, as a Moroccan, as a Moroccan and Moroccans, how far we can go with the percentage of education and analphabetism is just growing and growing and growing. What kind of nation is going to be in the future? And then I said, I should, I should do something about it. You should find something. And then um, in 2014, I started actually my research in Morocco. So I went to the outskirts of big towns, um, small towns, uh, small communities and started from there and here. And then I end up in Atlas Mountains and then I... Uh, I just met one guy by accident, he was in a cafe, and then he, um, we started to talk about what are you doing here? It was really far from my, you know, my town uh, where I live, and then it was, I, I live in, I'm actually from north, and that place is really south. And then uh, I told him, yeah, I'm just looking for, you know, making film about, uh, you know, schools, education, and, and, you know, I'm looking. And he said, well, uh, how about coming to, I present you to my community? I said, yeah, let's go. I would be happy. This, this would be wonderful. So then we took actually a car and then we, we drive 180 kilometers just like in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And then we end up to his family because he's also son of nomads. But himself, he, he, he was educated and then um, uh, he, he just by accident, um, he finishes his studies. And then he, we, we went to his family. This was very beautiful tent and nomads and first time going to, to be with nomads. And of course, when he came to this area, just like, I said, oh my God, this is life. This is the place where I want to live. The smell, the, the beauty, the, uh, the sound, the cleaning, the, you know, everything is, is perfect. And the silence, total silence, no cars, no electricity, your phone make chick gone. I mean, there is absolutely nothing else than you and nature. And then I said to him, so I was just like curious, well, where, is this, where is the school? You see me there. And he sees me there. This means some kind of seven kilometers, which he didn't see anything, just like spot. And then he sees me where? He sees me that spot, that small house, it's school. I said, are you joking? You took, you, 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 we were like driving 160, 80 kilometers to here to see me, this is school. No, you know, we're not joking, I'm serious. And then, okay, well, let's go. So we went there and we opened the door because the door was open. No one there, just a couple of chairs and the tables were broken. And then I said to him, well, 
Yeah, I'm sorry. I, you know how I'm going to make a film about this this spot here. I can't I can't do anything about it. And then he said to me, "Well, anyway, yeah." So it's more is what are kids? The you know teacher. He said, "More teacher, just quit because he couldn't continue. He was he spent here about three months, so he couldn't make it. The kids now they are with families and tents, and because we are nomads." And he said, "Well, now you are welcome to us, and we we can. They are they are, they are very uh, you know very warm-hearted. They are very." nice people and stuff. They, they like strangers and stuff like that. So I went with them. Then we start to talk and stuff. Then I find out, okay, hey, those people, they are nomad. Then they start to learn about their lives, that they have never been, you know, uh, living there. They just start to, to settle sl slowly, slowly because of the drought, because of climate change. And then no water. And then they start to learn all these things. And then they say to me, well, uh, now for the moment we are looking, actually, we don't care about ourselves, but we care only about kids, the future of kids, what they are going to do if we stop this culture of moving around, of being a nomad. So the only way we, we, we thought that could help these kids is education. And we did build that school. And now we are, we are going perhaps to have a, a teacher in four or five months. And then I was silent for a moment. And then I turned to my hands and said, OK, I think all these elements, they could be they could make some kind of interesting story. Mm -hmm. I will see. And that's what it starts from. Mm -hmm. And so you were extremely lucky with the teacher, I think. Yes, um, definitely. How, did, how, how difficult was it to earn his trust? And how difficult was it to earn the trust of the parents? Um, the trust, I think it was a little bit uh, complicated. It wasn't really that easy because um, they were starting to think, why, why this guy is coming to to us, why he's interested about us. Even the government, they, it, it, they, they don't care. First, they thought that I'm coming like I'm part of the government or I'm just like spying on them or trying to find out about them or something like that. But slowly, slowly, we start, you know, to, 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 to talk and I returned back many times, it wasn't the first time, uh, come back and with the camera and start to, to you know, to shoot. No, um, I came there some six, seven times without nothing, even photos. No, I didn't take even photos for people. Just came there, spend time with them, talk to them, and then go with them there on daytime, what they are doing, what they are eating, what they are drinking, how they, how they raise the children, when, which time they wake up, which time they, they, they sleep, how they manage with water, with food, because there is no market there, no road, no electricity, no hospital. So I just want to share with them life of in the middle of nowhere. And that slowly, slowly became, you know, they became really trust him and um, then when the teacher also when he came he was a little bit like distant and um, I, I said to him okay because I meet him actually in town before he came to to the to the you know to the village and he was spending there two days because he needed to wait for transportation because he can't come there and the transportation only those people those nomads they should go to the market mm -hmm. on the market day so they could bring the teacher mm -hmm. so he was living with him two days day and night. Mm -hmm. And then I would just try to, you know, to see who is this guy, why he's coming there. And then we talk and we talk and he said to me, at one moment, he said to me, oh, well, I think we have the same mission together. I, I, my mission is coming. I should come here to, 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 to help these kids to educate themselves and to try to help them to find some kind of future. And you are coming to help these people to make their voice perhaps heard by, by other people. I think somehow we are in the same platform. And that moment, it's okay. Perhaps we are going to to make a very good uh, team, and and it was it was very good. From that moment, he became really nice. You know, absolutely no no problem. And uh, so it was it was great actually. It was, you know, uh, like they say that uh, documentaries are made by God, fiction is made by by directors. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my accident. <laughs> There was a scene, there was a scene in, in your film where the son writes the name, I think, of the father um, and shows him how to write, um, which I found incredibly moving. I was like literally crying while seeing this, this scene. So uh, thank you for the film. It's, um, it was really, I think you've, you've managed your, your mission, basically. Um, have the protagonists seen the film? Have you managed to show them the film yet? And not yet, because the film is not shown actually um, in Morocco. And yet, as, as you know now, the, the film is making kind of turn now around. It 
just like it was premiere in um, in uh, hot dogs mm -hmm. and uh, so we were winning even the jury prize mm -hmm. which was great and uh, now after that after that perhaps we are going to to show it um, not not in Morocco, but we are going to start to plan with with the guy who was showing me the the, the, com the community from the beginning. If we can go there and show the film uh, to to the community, and uh, I'm really hoping that we can manage to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm I'm really scared to see people how they're going to, because those people they have never been in uh, you know in, in, on TV. They have never been they they never saw themselves in a on in the cameras and stuff like that. So I'm I'm really a little bit scared how how they're going to take it, how they will see themselves in, on, on, on screen. So I hope we can make it. And it is, it is actually, um, yeah, it is a little bit, I'm a little bit, um, you know, uh, not afraid, but anyway, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to, to share with them those moments. And how are, you, how are you envisioning it? How are you planning it? Do you want to like take a generator there and a, and a big screen and project yes. it or, yeah, okay. Uh, we are planning actually with well, that's uh, the, the the guy or like he was kind of um, you know uh, location manager. Mm -hmm. So he's he's going. We are going to plan that stuff with some other. Well, I think with Americans who were also part of the film, they are willing to um, to uh, perhaps to to find a spark lay of that, and they, perhaps they will be also with us. So we can hire some kind of uh, big screen and you know just some. I don't know what, what technical we need there because there is no electricity and there is nothing, but we can manage actually to show it in big screen for the people and gather all the people for, mm -hmm. uh, especially if it's going to be the summer, it would be, it would be wonderful. So um, I think uh, just like on, uh, in the middle again of nowhere <laughs> to show them that film. So I think we, we are planning to do that. I hope it will happen. Mm -hmm. And do you know if the, the, if the pandemic has affected the life of the nomads or... Um... Not not uh, not much because those people they live really far from each other like 12 kilometers 15 kilometers so they don't live actually as a community like but of course they meet each other uh, at least once a week or if there is some kind of uh, birthday party or some wedding they meet and they gather and they and they celebrate that of course they celebrate but I heard from someone because they can't connect with them um, with the locals because they don't have a connection uh, for someone they say to me that no. That was absolutely no problem because they don't they don't they don't really confront each other and they don't meet each other more often and that's that just nature so I don't think it was bad there. Good, good. Um, apart from the, the wonderful teacher and the different parents we meet throughout the film, the main focus lies on on the kids. Um, yes. What what is it that fascinates you um, about children as protagonists? Um, well, I think um, if we if we think about the um, the education system in, in Morocco, uh, I mean, I can't tell it through an adult. I should I should tell it uh, through the kids because the kids they are the the next generation. They are the ones who uh, who are uh, uh, carrying the, the, the you know the um, the um, the problems. If it's going to be a problem or it is not going to be a problem so um if uh, and also with the kids uh sometimes if they trust you then they are honest they are very reliable they are very uh trustful and uh, and uh, and you can see the, the, the reality you can see really the the you know the uh how can i say it i mean um you can see the truth through the kids and uh, they won't tell you something else than, than the truth. Like, for example, when the teacher by accident asked them that this is this is um, school of hope. Mm -hmm. Do you know what does it mean hope? And one of them just said, no, teacher, I don't I don't know what is hope. So just, you know, just like that. He, he, he didn't think about it. He didn't think that there is camera. He didn't think that he just said, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know what does mean hope. And then when the teacher was asking them about uh, I hope that you, the, towards the end of the film, that I hope that you, when you became something, you return back to your to your community and you teach them or you do something, uh, do some work here. And one of them say, "Teacher, I don't want to return back. Me, at least me, I'm, I don't want to return back." And that is the the truth, the the the, the truthful moments which you can really really see from 
um, you know, for the, from, from kids, which no one else can, can say it. And then, um, and then the, the kids, when you see them uh, learning slowly, slowly, he can go to the board and he can write his name or he can read the word, you know, you should be there. It was, for me, it was just like, oh my God. He, you know, he, he managed, he returned back and he was so, or she was so happy. She managed to read one sentence or one word. And then they could go out and they could talk to, to talk to each other and say, you know, today I was reading the whole sentence. Imagine the whole sentence. So that is fascinating. This is, this is actually, uh, for us who are educated, we don't know that. We, we miss this, this, those moments and, and we, don't, we don't care about it. So, um, so I, think, I think there was really a lot of moments which you, I was really like, I have tears, really, I have tears in my eyes to see something small, but they appreciate it. They are coming to school, they are enthusiastic, they are happy, they are just, one of the, or the kid, uh, one father said to me that his daughter, she wake him up at five o'clock morning, she said, daddy, wake up, I should go to school, it's too late, five o'clock morning, and her father just won't sleep another hour or half an hour, and she just wants to go. He said to me, crazy, those kids, you don't know what's happened to them. Mm -hmm. So that is... Uh, and then the boy, this Milud, the eldest one, when he's coming to confront his father, I want to go to school, I want to study. I mean, look at it in Europe or in, 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 in big towns, even in Morocco. They don't want to go to school. They are so lazy. They don't care. And, and, and their parents, they push them to go to school. And, and this one, he just said, I want to go to school. I want to have, I want to study all the time, not two days. Not two hours, two day, all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is the difference. I mean, you can see the, you know, the, the balance. You can see the, the other, the other side of the, of the picture. If we can, if we, if we look at ourselves, our life, here or in big towns and there. So I think kids, they are, um, uh, they are, they are really, uh, they could tell the truth. You can see the truth of the society, of the culture, of um, anything. I mean, I mean, they are the ones who can the only ones who can tell you the truth of what you are looking for. Um, and, but he, the, the, um, Milou, I think, the 13-year-old, um, the, yes. oldest, the oldest boy, um, he then starts working on, the, on, a, as a build, on a building site, I think, with yeah. his uncle, I think. Um, um, I found it, of course, terribly sad to see him yeah. working and not going to school anymore. Um, but I guess that is the reality for quite a few young kids, right? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's a reality. That's really a reality because in the school where uh, I was filming, it wasn't even school. It is not school. It is not like governmental school. It is just a um, house. And then the, the teacher also is really like paid by some associations. It is not, he's not really sent by the government. And uh, the teacher, he, he could have three classes in the same time, three levels. So the first and second and the third. And those kids, they could stay there for two, three years. And then if they can't manage to go to town, because going to town, moving to town, mm -hmm. need a lot of money. And those people, they don't have money to, to take their kids to town. So most of them, they, they will finish at three years, four years, and then they will go. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it. That's mm -hmm. few of them, they, few of them they, they, they can make it. Mm -hmm. But I think the percentage is very, very small. Not really a big uh, percentage. Then I st then I'm uh, I try to be optimistic I think uh, because um, and and use the title of your film School of Hope to hope that at least a few of them will will make it. Yes. No, but I think there is um, um, just last last shooting uh, days we have uh, three I think three two one boy and two girls they moved to town to finish the, to, to continue the studies and one of them we have it we have them in. Uh, in the in the film and there was two girls there but we couldn't film them because if we film them they, they are not really main characters so we didn't want to mm -hmm. mix up things but there was two girls also in the same school okay. uh, studying okay um, but unfortunately our time is running out um it was oh. lovely speaking to you um thank, thank you, you very much. very much um i wish you all the best for the Thanks film so um and thank i really want to be there actually when you show the film to the community i would love seeing that uh, the reaction I, I would invite you actually when we're we <laughs> um to our audience um if you enjoyed this film as much as i did um you can you can give your vote to this film for the kino kino audience award 
sponsored by Dreisat and BR. Um, you can cast your vote on our homepage. Um, the film School of Hope has already won a prize at the DocFest Munich. It's the, it's the winner of the DocFest Award of the SOS Kinderdörfer Weltweit, sponsored by Boa Videokunst. So congratulations to that as well. Thank you um, very much. And you have the chance to see the film School of Hope um, until the 23rd of May. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. you.